Okay. Ready, everyone? Hello and good afternoon. So, myself, Ruby Patel, and <laughs> okay, so myself Ruti Patel, the manager of the program team. So I would like to start the presentation. So we are presenting program E 2014P that is based on an electrocardiograph and invested blood pressure machine. So I just proceed with the rest of the presentation. So we have a team. So my team has CEO, that's a part of the myself project manager and a team member Fontinio, Farah Chalichi, Nicholas, Daniel McLogan, and Jeremy Guerrier. So the rest of the presentation will be proceed by Farah Hello everyone. Hello. I'm Farah as you already introduced me. Um, I myself am the CEO of our technical manager. I have, I make the decisions for the project and I also am responsible for the manuals and the best PowerPoint. Uh, project manager really is responsible for all the academic part of this project because we have two sides and she's also responsible for keeping us on track and taking us towards the end product which is right here. Uh, the research team includes Funking Yu, uh, Nicholas and myself, and we are responsible for researching all the circuits and making the prototypes, testing them, making sure they work, and handing them to the development team. And the development team is responsible for bringing them to life, uh, printing them, and soldering, and testing, and making them work. Uh, then the development team includes Daniel Glockman, Jim Lydia, and Farhad Chaiti, and uh, Media Arts and Communication. Which is for HUB, and he's responsible for you know all the media and updates and things like that. So, I would like to introduce you to our PowerPoint. All the sessions are here on the presentation data, and they follow the order in the judges' uh, marking scheme. Uh, we, at the end of the PowerPoint, we have the layout button at the end of each section. Sorry, and that brings us back to this slide and then you can proceed to the next section. And then at the top right corner of every slide that answers a question, you will have the question number and the clinical or biomedical perspective, which corresponds to the question on the project number. <coughs> section 8, UI situation. Introduction to IPP. So what is IPP? Invasive blood pressure, or IPP, refers to the invasive measurement of arterial pressure in the arteries of a patient through a medical device known as an IPP machine. And as you can see here, this is how it's done. There is a line hooked up to the patient, which goes to the transducer, and then it goes to the signal and gives us a signal and pressure values. So, what is the intended application of our device? The ProMed E2014 PECG and IEP machine is intended as an educational tool and, have, and that is an accurate replica of a real uh, ECG and IVP machine. It performs all functions of a real and EC, ECG and IVP machine, however, does not have a medical device license, neither is a medical grade device, so it should never be used on a real patient and you will not be responsible for us. <laughs> <laughs> so just for everyone's uh, clarity, we presented the ECG last semester. This semester, we're only presenting the IPP. So features and functions of our uh, device. It faithfully measures the IPP, uh, which is really important clinically. Uh, we have color-coded back with LED displays can see over there. Uh, we have internal calibration signals of 0, 80, 100, 200 millimeters per mercury. So they can be used. We will talk about them later in the part one. Function selector switch, which is the different functions of the machine. Zero calibration adjustment to adjust it for 
atmospheric pressure, uh, easily adjustable gain stage for the clinicians to use, systolic and diastolic alarms with audible and visual indicators, which is really important, and we will we'll, we'll talk about them later, and time alarm unit. Value and usefulness of the IVP machine. IVP is a vital sign. If we have no IVP, the patient is on line. IVP is a continuous measurement and is accurate. Uh, Non-invasive blood pressure is inaccurate and also puts a strain on the patient by inflating and deflating, and we can't do it too many times. Um, IVP provides more clinical information. As we saw, we also have a waveform, and non-invasive blood pressure only gives us pressure values. Um, also, it provides us an access to an artery, just in case we need to give the patient some medicines. And it's used in the ICU and OR, that's important to know, because it's not used for diagnostic purposes as the ECG is. It will, it's just used for monitoring. Okay, so I would like to introduce you to our signal flow diagram. Uh, first of all, we have the patient giving us the signal and their internal calibration. So overall, we have four signals. That go into the function selector switch. That uh, changes the inputs to the instrumentation amplifier. And then the output of the instrumentation amplifier goes to the low pass filter, which makes the signal cleaner. Also, where there's a zero calibration to adjust the amplifier, as I talked about before. The output of the filter then goes to two places. It goes to the gain stage and the output on the screen. And then it goes also to the systolic and diastolic peak detectors, which, end, which ends up on the screens right here, and uh, also to the alarms. I would like to call one to you. Okay, so today I present session B functional test. First is the adjustable gain. Um, the adjustable gain allows the clinicians to make the waveform bigger or smaller, basically change the size of the waveform. Therefore, the clinicians can view it from further away or like zooming in to see more detail. Also, it will make the size of the waveform of the display monitor smaller, so it will overlap with other signals like ECG signal. Just a picture of our game. Okay, also um, it, from the biomedical engineering perspective, the adjustable gate allows us to change the only the display that part of the signal. It won't change the readout of the systolic diastolic of the or the map of the machine. And demonstration. Now as you can see, bring it up, it's bigger. And bring it down. As you can see, the rails still stay the same. And this is the circuit design of the gate adjustable game. As you can see, um, the highlighted part is like the um, there. It's uh, basically just all of them. And it's like the very resistor is like all the way to the waterfall. So we can connect it all the way to the front panel. Therefore, the condition can adjust it. And the zero calibration. The zero calibration allows the clinicians to adjust the baseline of the signal all the way to the atmosphere pressure. Therefore, um, the real will be accurate. It will help us to avoid um, the misdiagnosis and any um, unnecessary treatment due to the misdiagnosis. Also, it helps us to avoid any um, unnecessary trigger of the alarms. Uh, as you can see in this picture, um, the atmosphere's pressure change all the time, so it depends on your location and the height or the weather. So it's necessary to adjust it every time before the machine is used. And from a biomedical engineering perspective, the gain of the signal is not affected by any way of the by the zero calibration. Also, um, still one more time, it's important you just need to calibrate it before the use. Otherwise, the signal probably is like higher smaller. So, adjust to your panel. You have it set.
here is the circuit design of the zero transmission. Um, still one more time, there is the OM as the amplifier. We put the signal reception there, it's like uh, connect to the potential meter at the front panel. The potential meter at the front panel is connected to both positive and negative voltage. Therefore, we can offset the signal both positive and negative direction. The effects of the gain adjustment and the zero calibration. The gain adjustments won't, again, won't affect any readout from the machine. And the zero calibration it won't change the waveform or the gain of the machine either. So it's important to adjust it. Um, so the biomedical engineering perspective to start up check. The start up check is basically a standard way to start a machine for checking any troubleshooting. It will help us to slow down, you know, to shorten the time for troubleshooting. It also helps us to get a basic idea of where is the problem. So first, the panel, we have a panel meter all the way at the back of the machine. If we switch it on from the back, we can see what's the DC voltage we supply to the machine. Also there will be a red LED at the back of what right beside the power supply. It's indicated that the power supply is working. And at the front, when we switch the switch button, there will be a green LED illuminate, indicate that there's a power delivered to the network, so all the PCB should get the power. And on every PCB, there's a red LED and a green LED on the top left of the board. It shows us the, both the positive voltage and the negative voltage of the PCB, so at least we know that the PCB get the power. And also, we need to zero, make sure the condition zero power the machine every time before they do it, otherwise any error or there is a lot of machines for the definition need to do it. And last, when we check it, we need to hook it up to um, our patient simulator and select the right function of the patient simulator. And select the right lead, basically it's the dynamic lead, shows us the uh, signal from the patient simulator. So, okay, as you can see, uh, when you turn the power button on, there's a red LED that illuminates, you can't see it now, you can see it later. When you turn the device on, the green LED illuminate, and each board has a red and green LED to notify them. Hello everyone, my name is Jamie Goetia, and I'm going to be doing section C, Amplifier Design. So what are the criteria I use for the selection of the instrumentation amplifier? Very high gain because our signals are so small, so we have to make it large so we can diagnose the problem. High CMR, common mode detection ratio, we will talk about it later. High slow rate because the signals are so quick, so we have to make it slow. Low noise contribution to reduce or neglect noise. Large range of the operating temperature, so the, the device or the, the component can work in, in any environment, in any environment, any temperature. Cost and availability because it is for educational purpose and the most comply with standard for IBP. So it should be, it should match the real machine or it, it should close to the real machine. So technical specification required for the instrumentation amplifier, well, it should match this specification and the value should match the uh, real machine or the machine what we made already. So it should, uh, we just got it from uh, this AMI standard uh, and we got it from the online. So we just were trying to make it as close as, as we can go with this, uh, with this criteria. Okay, slow rate and the response time. As a, a high slow rate and the uh, a high slow rate and the response time is required for the faithful application of, of the blood pressure waveform. As you saw in the image, the diacrotic knob it is required for this slow rate and the response time which represent that the signal is good. So gain adjustment. The gain must be linear. It must be able to handle up, up to like 215 millimeter LG, uh, mm LG, sorry. 
the gain of the IA must be calibrated and sealed. The must be, uh, there must be an additional gain stage for the clinicians. And the gain stage for the clinician must not affect the measurement. Okay, common mode retention ratio. As we all know, this uh, in a medical field, the noise is we, we face noise all the time, and uh, our our criteria to, is to you to neglect or reject those noise. What we whatever we find from our our surrounding us. So noise is present everywhere, and uh, the the purpose of IA is to make or to reduce or neglect that noise. What we face actually what which really disturb the signals, real signals. So hence uh, we, we our, our criteria is to make IA to uh, neglect or reject th that noise what, whatever we fire, get from patients or other, uh, other components of the machine. So as you can see this signals are with noise. So we cannot add, we cannot check anything, we cannot figure it out anything, and the signals without noise. So we can figure it out and we can diagnose the problems and okay. The frequency response. IDT signals has a frequency range around 96 to 0 to 60 hertz. However, the frequency of the actual signal from from the patient is far lower than that, around like 3 hertz around approximately. The device must be compatible to the frequency range and if it is not compatible, the waveform produced will not will distort or will distort it or untrue. So we cannot figure it out or we cannot figure, figure the problems. What are the what is the importance of the faithful reproduction of the IDP signals? So clinical important for, uh, from the clinical perspective, so we can use it for clinical purpose. Consistency, once you on the device, the signal should be consistent. Accurate, accuracy of the diagnosis depends on the accuracy of display. So whatever you measure from the patient, that, that should be on the display or on, uh, on the screen, so we can diagnose the problem and we can figure it out what is going on actually. So it should not dis destroy or it should not disturb the signals. And clinician must be able to trust on the device. So that means once you once you get accurate signal, as I said earlier, the clinician can uh, trust on that signals, and they uh, and they can figure out or diagnose the problems. So this is the main importance of the faithful of the IDP signal. And for sex and the internal calibration signal, I would like to call for Hachari. My name is Marcel Chalichi, I'm a, a explaining for the section B of your skin marking, an uh, internal calibration signal. Okay, internal calibration signal circuit. Here, what is uh, we achieved on this internal calibration? Uh, it's a verification of the IA gain, is internal section uh, amplifier, three voltage divider with the potential of it. Uh, which is shown on the next slide and uh, the same as uh, what we have. Um, each potential meter is calibrated to all the of the specific uh, static pressure and also three buffer stabilize the signal and avoid it to flow. So, in our uh, uh, notice that we have it here, we get the 9 volts from the I we got the signal to the, our three potential meter voltage divider that we received. We have to adjust uh, and control the whatever voltage we needed. And we, after we controlling and uh, sending the signal to the three buffer that we have, this buffer is uh, protecting our uh, signal to not losing and any, uh, uh, make sure that we sending the whatever, uh, like five volts if we need it, send it all the way to the, our IA. Troubleshooting phase of uh, internal calibration circuit is a positive and negative uh, LEDs power, which is we have this on, on each board, we have a two uh, red and green LED that uh, show us this. We receive the power, we, uh, we uh, 
easy to troubleshoot. Removable board for free calibration. We can remove the board very easy, but just two seconds, just come down and we can calibrate the, uh, our measurement. A board is easily uh, pluggable in the border room and uh, is a little bit testing and uh, calibration. So our board is uh, very easy to pluggable and by connector we can uh, testing our calibration. Uh, all the alternate show me there are tempered uh, are tempered proof of uh, preparation of uh, calibration. So if anything happened to our device, is fault or is damaged, we are, we're not going to lose our calibration. We're not going to lose any adjustment. We have to say it as a tempered proof of uh, uh, potential. All IC chips and our uh, IC socket uh, for quick replacement. So we just uh, designed the circuit for in design. Anything happened for the chip, we don't need to be the soldering or damage the board. We just remove the board from the socket. The next slide is the uh, quality of the internal calibration signal, which is uh, the signal is uh, activated instantly. It is coming very fast. The signal is DC signal and does not change. It's a flat line we got on the DC. The pressure is uh, verified by all the read of display. Uh, we get a three same uh, reading on the display as well as you can see over here. Um, and also signal is also deactivated instantly. Uh, as long as, we, as long as we don't need it, it's uh, by second, just we can uh, get off from the power and demonstration will be done. So is that zero? Clinicians uh, can quickly verify the faithful of the measurement, like uh, it's trustable for the clinicians. Clinicians can verify the operation of the upper or lower limit, which is has a test alarm. And also, clinicians can compare the waveform of the recorded or the unknown pressure. That is uh, also is, uh, very uh, helpful for the clinicians. For the next section, section D, I want to ask Mr. Good afternoon, I'll be talking about section E, the reader. <coughs> so, before we begin, I'd just like to state that our patient signal here is at 120 over 80 northern mercury, which is a regular patient signal. Uh, color coded displays, so as you can see, red is your systolic, blue is your diastolic, and yellow is your lap, your mean arterial pressure. So, within a 3 plus minus 3% range. Uh, our circuit here, which is basically a heat detector, um, the upper circuit on the top is your solid. Your middle one is your disolid. So for that, that was really big trouble. You have to invert it and offset it. Heat detect, hold it, and then invert it and offset it again and grab the signal. The 5 o'clock timer uses a signal, which is calibrated at some frequency, to trigger the relay to reset it every 8 seconds. So features. Highly visible, easy to read, color coded, they're organized in the same pattern, and um, they're not cancer proof and they're calibrated automatically. So, some of the troubleshooting aids uh, it is a long circuit by itself, like it's just basically for the video, so, but it does have the same functions as the other ones, it has positive minus LEDs, it also is removable and you can calibrate all the pots that are the hot boots you can't handle, and all the IC chips have sockets. Most critical piece of information is the solid pressure. Why? It's because the clinician needs to know that if the person's going to have a heart attack or stroke, the first thing they're going to do is look at that read and see if that's the problem. So, criteria for the reader. It needs to be dependable, visual, distinctive. You know, if you look at a bunch of you're going to know the solid pressure and everything else. Um, also, the alarms indicated. Showing the alarm on LEDs located right beside the display, so it does alarm right exactly beside the display for clinician use. Okay. So, section F, the caller. Hello, my name is Daniel Martin. I'm going to be presenting section F. This is how we upgrade. Okay, before we start, the judges can come up now if they'd like or after the presentation and judge questions 25. 
So, I'm going to start off with question 27, the criteria used to select three test points. We chose the power, input, and output because these are the most important points of the circuits. So, some troubleshooting and service features. Some of these were already mentioned before. We have positive and negative power LEDs on every quarter. This alerts the user that it is working. And all the boards are removable, and they can easily, be easy, easily plugged into the breadboards for testing, and there's no need for cutting wires or soldering. The motherboard design is incorporating power and signal makes troubleshooting a lot easier. Um, all the potentiometers you can't remove in case of shaking or vibrating of the device. And as mentioned before, the ICs all have sockets for replacement because Sometimes they burn out, and positive and neg negative power supply voltage reading on the back shows that it's at the right voltage. And all the boards are organized in a logical manner, and, and flow diagrams in there. So some simple quality improvements. We have a clear top and front panel, so you can easily check inside of it. And there's large rubber feet on the bottom of each corner for stability, and it also avoids external grounding taps. Handles on each side for easy transportation. And the sides also have hinges so we can open them up and take some components out if we need to to make it easier. As well as the portable stand with an oscilloscope patient simulator on board for mobility. So next is the features for our production and shielding. The features that are considered for a medical grade device are medical EMC, EMI power, cord inlet, RF paint, <coughs> Faraday cage, and shielded wires for signals. What we came up with, we have a medical grade power cord in it. Instead of the arc tank, we have a toroidal transformer that is circular so it produces noise. Uh, we were able to make a Faraday cage, and instead of the shielded wires for signals, we have high CM CMRR instrumentation amplifier and filter circuits. And here is a picture of a Faraday cage. As you can see, <laughs> On the ground there, it's grounded, and so the person inside will not get shocked. If it's not grounded, he will definitely get shocked. And so next, I will be explaining Section G, Significant Quality Upgrades. <coughs> so our first significant quality upgrade is our color-coded displays, as mentioned by Nick. So the clinical significance of this is that it avoids confusion. It's simple, you can look at it, red for systolic, blue diastolic, yellow for mean arterial pressure, and it's, it's easy to use. And our second upgrade is the systolic and diastolic alarm. Clinical significance for this is it protects the patient in case of a spike in the readings, and there's a red LED located beside the systolic and diastolic readouts, as well as an audible alarm to notify. And now I'd like to call Judy Capel for the second page. Good morning. So, everyone, I'm back again. So, I'll be discussing about the bonus section, section H. So, we have the first bonus is the alarm mode. So, from the clinical perspective, so it's a very visual and a time alarm mode. It's easy for the technical clinical staff. And it moves alarm for the 30 seconds. And uh, when the alarm is mute, so we have the LED on, LED triggers. So, and the push button is also very easy to use. So we have a demonstration. So, once you push it, it will show the mute, uh, yeah. LED is on. LED is on, continue once the alarm is mute. Okay. So, bonus two are the power indicators. So from the biomedical perspective, it's a very super fast troubleshooting. So you can easily find out where the problem is. So it's located on the top left of the each course. You can just see there are two LEDs. One is a green and one is a red. So green has a positive plus 9 volt and a red has a minus 9 volt. And it's an easy troubleshooting tool. And the third is a service lights. So from the biomedical significance, it's easy for troubleshooting. So without a power supply also we can use this light, it's about to be it. So tell you strips, velcro is attached to it, you can see. So you can remove the velcro and you can place it wherever you want to find some components or whatever. And 
bright and it's extremely useful in any situation. So our third year team has a few intern students who contributed in our machine. So I just call up a manager that's calling over.
service. So in conclusion, working with ProMed, you know, we, as a team, we started off and we started with a team building exercise, and that's brought our teams together, and really helped uh, the overall progress of the key mount circuit and the progress of their ProMed uh, device. And working with these guys in the future, I, as a team, we work with them uh, anytime, and I'm sure we're seeing next year in the future when we're in their position, and someone else is in ours, we're going to look to them for advice. So, I just want to talk a little bit about uh, Section 9 miscellaneous marks. As you can see in the marking scheme, it's like a checklist. So, you may judge this after the mark is finished. Uh, I just wanted to talk about one point here. In, I think, point 3 or 4, it talks about having the ice cube relay. Um, yes, uh, one I7. Uh, this was, is a problem because we, we researched this and it does not go with any of our specifications of our device. It runs on a higher voltage, it takes a lot of current and we needed way more relays. So our power supply would not have been able to handle it. And also it takes way more space than the relay we selected. That's actually a telecommunication relay. It's a two single pole double throw switch and it takes one tenth of the power and it's one tenth of the size and we've used ten of these as mm -hmm. Dave would know. <laughs> so I would like to call up Nicholas Lees for the overall demonstration of the project, building ECG and IED. Okay. We'll start off with uh, ECG. We're on leap one right now. So we'll see as if we've got a debound problem that's actually working right now. So <laughs> There's lead two. We'll do a quick alarm. Trigger here. Three. Oh, let's see. Jumps. There's a one level pulse calibration signal. Cardiac simulator. Also runs on a battery by itself. And get it back to lead three. Lead three. Down. Up. Gaining your offset. So, bring it back up. And go to Up. Back okay, now I can just start off at zero. Alarm. I want Jay Shore to mute. Hold on for about 40 seconds. Static pressure of 80. Now that pause is that peak and uh, peak and hold circuit. So every every eight seconds it will trigger. And you'll see that little flicker. Go to 100. Go to 200. The upper alarm's on. Mute's still on. Back to the dynamic pressure. Should go high. Okay. And you were showing the gain and the offset support.
uh, Pravin Patel for teaching us all about power supplies and transistors. And Rao, he's not here right now, but he taught us all about digital circuits. And Lauren, and she taught us all about op -ads and every circuit we have includes your knowledge. Um, Sandra Fella for supporting us in hard times. <laughs> Louis. <laughs> <laughs> and also teaching us valuable troubleshooting that we still use from analysis in our machine. Uh, also Med Gen and Apollo Medical for keeping up with us and uh, helping us out sometimes we sit together and storm some ideas for circuits. Um, all of security staff for keeping us safe <coughs> during the night time <laughs> and sometimes locking us out. <laughs> Always. Leanne for making the beautiful stickers for us, which you can see later. And Savannah McGoslin for making our symbol better. We had a symbol, she, she edited a lot and made it better. And she is in the digital photography course. Thank you all for your patience and keeping up with us. And judges and audience will now come up and get the water.